what? It is borderline a peace town. There is a lot of trouble in paradise here with some loose pieces in the position. So I think we should quickly rewind. I can see what opening this came from just by the contours of the position. But for many people, like, how did we get here? It started with a Berlin opening. So I'm quickly going to zoom through the first moves just because the Berlin is played so much at the highest levels. And it was a capture on E4. Rook E1, so none of the D4 main lines. Rook E1 is a very solid approach because you don't have to change the pawn structure. We now are back to symmetrical territory. Bishop E7, locking the open file. And then we saw the bishop retreat back to F1. The bishop was in fact under attack there, so it moves back to its starry square. And Ivanka, as these pieces get traded here, it looks completely symmetrical, but black's pieces are a little awkwardly placed. Yeah, they are a little bit awkwardly placed. And, uh, but if, if you give Black a few more moves, you know, the knight will move out of the way. There will be some kind of c6, d5. The bishop will move away from e7. So white has to do something now. And it's very trendy these days to play in the exact same way that Ali Reza has played. He starts with d4, opening up the dark square bishop. Bishop f6, rook slides back, moves under attack. And let's fight for the open file only open file on the board and here is where it gets spicy bishop f4 saying i don't care about the pawn on d4 and you can see that many games this variation are drawn that's the bar to the left of our board here it's not an evaluation it's actually historical the database of games and white uh, he has the upper hand in those games rook takes e1 queen takes e1 and bishop not takes on d4 yet he starts with knight d8 so the bishop can capture that knight and only after knight c3 will this bishop take on d4. So, Yvonne, you're a pawn grabber. I'm going to keep uh, asking you these questions. <laughs> Do you like grabbing this central pawn? Yes, absolutely. Why not? And, and I hear I'm going to quote Yasser like you did yesterday. If you're going to die, why not die on a full stomach? I absolutely <laughs> think that when it comes to these type of positions, you've got to start eating those pawns. So, yeah. I'm not going to be shaken out of my life philosophy just yet. Okay, bishop takes d4. Give me your central pawn. Knight to d5. It's aiming at the c7 pawn, which is defended. I just want to show a little tactical shot here that you always need to be careful when your king does not have luft. What is luft? It's space for your king to escape a check on the rank. So if you play, say, pawn to a6, and you see the evaluation change completely, it's because this c7 pawn is vulnerable. I can take this pawn on c7, and after it takes, bishop takes c7. Your queen cannot accept this free bishop because checkmate ends the game on the spot. You need space for your king to escape. Yeah. <laughs> A very, very instructive uh, tactical idea there, using the back rank to net the pawn on c7. So, obviously, Masudu doesn't want a piece to arrive on c7 so that's why he goes at d6 blocking the coordination from the knight and the bishop but Ali Reza he, you know he's known for his dynamism and says you know what the knight on e8 is still vulnerable there's still ideas of back rank mates and so off he goes again and yeah I think that again this is I'm looking at the database I'm seeing asking whether this has been played for and yes it has been played bishop to g5 just keeping the momentum going. All right, another bishop sacrifice because the back rank checkmate that we just saw, it's uh, the same exact concept. So f6 is played, and I think this is another good moment to pause. Because
that there was almost pure perfect accuracy from him and the final position where Parham resigned is because he cannot stop this H pawn. There is a pin along the D file. Yes, his king can step out of the pin, but the problem is the queen comes in with a check, the pawn will go and push ahead, and if the king for black had gone the other way, say king to e7, then I can throw this check on e5 to force the king back over here. There are all sorts of checks available to the queen, but I will push the pawn and give you this check where your king is stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can't keep both of your loose pieces defended. White would pick up at least the knight and then get the new queen anyway. Yes. We are back in Vikense and just as we can see Param extending his hand in resignation, Ali Reza Faruja winning his second game. But what a beautiful victory from the Frenchman. Just, you know, punished that opening inaccuracy by Param ruthlessly. Fantastic attack, sacrificing first one pawn, then another, then he potentially sacrificed a piece just to net the king in the middle of the board. And there we can see Param, he's going to be disappointed with that result and that performance.